Yeah, as we get out our outlines, this morning we're going to look at the helmet of salvation. And uh, I thought, boy, this is uh, pretty important as we finish the uh, spiritual armor uh, that we've uh, been on for the last... Uh, I only did 21 parts in the book of Ephesians, so 21 weeks. How long is that? That's a couple months, isn't it? How many? Five months. Let's just start the whole thing over again. <laughs> Okay, the helmet of salvation, we're going to look at that today. Great time of worship and praise. Wonderful to see all of you here, your happy, smiling faces. Life is moving on for you. No problems, no worries. I'm so happy for all of you. <laughs> Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for this time together. Uh, thank you so much for our worship and praise. That we can come here as a family, uh, gather around each other, pray for one another, care about each other. And Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. May the scriptures come off our notes and out of our Bibles today and penetrate our very spirit and soul. Lord, as we look at the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, may we use that equipment, that armor you have given us each and every day. And we give you praise and glory and thanksgiving as I ask your blessing over this word in the wonderful and mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is what? The Word of God. The sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. Place upon your head the helmet of salvation right now. Um, Scott, you have a nice little helmet there. Everybody can see yours. It's, it's really, uh, there you go, okay. Again, like I told you, our armor, everybody has their own armor to fit you. You have a beautiful helmet of salvation just for you. And so as we look at it today, uh, Roman numeral number one, the helmet of salvation. We look at it and we think, number one, as I place that helmet of salvation on, it is placed on our heads to remind us that our sins have been forgiven. That our sins have been forgiven and that we have been saved, and we have been saved by the wonders of God. God's wonders, His miracles, His power. And I think every time I put that helmet of salvation on, my sins have been forgiven, they've been forgotten, I've been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. I am so grateful and I'm so thankful that I'm saved Amen. and I'm set free in Jesus' name. I'm so grateful as I put that helmet on each and every day Wow, just, just think about that. We've been saved. Our sins are totally wiped out. And the second thing that's very, very important, number two, the helmet of salvation is there to protect our minds and our thought life. Extremely important. I place upon that, that helmet of salvation, I want my mind protected. I want my thoughts protected. I want my thoughts to be godly thoughts, and my mind needs to be protected. And I'll tell you why. The helmet of salvation is so vitally important. Satan always wants to attack your mind. Satan's number one weapon is to get into your brain, to get into your mind. And if he can get there, then he can control you. So Satan's number one thing is to get into the mind of every Christian and try to destroy it. And so we need to have that helmet of salvation on for no other reason to protect us from Satan trying to get into our brains. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, uh, Satan, if I don't have my helmet of salvation on, I'll tell you, doubts, fears, and worries can captivate us. I'm going to say it again. Doubts, fears, and worrying. And something else that I, I, I don't deal with it because I got my beautiful wife, my son's here today, I got kids and everything like that. But I'm going to tell you something. For a lot of people, there is a constant, constant in their brains of loneliness. Loneliness. I'm all alone. Nobody's with me. Nobody cares. It's just me. So Satan will place in our minds the sense of loneliness. No one's there. Again, nobody cares. I can talk, but nobody listens. But yet we know that that's all false, don't we? Yes. That is not true. 
But still, Satan will try to get in. And I thought, boy, this loneliness, because I don't know about you, but I, I deal with a lot of different people, not only in the church, but outside the church that will chat with me. And one of the big things that comes up is they're lonely. There's nobody around. They're all by themselves. And so we have to remember that, that loneliness. And sometimes people will even doubt their salvation. They'll, am I really saved? Why is this going on in my life? Why is this happening? And so Satan will put all these things again in our minds and in our thoughts. And he'll do anything he can to distract us from our walk with Jesus Christ. Satan will do whatever he can get into your brain. Who's, whose phone is that? Hello? <laughs> Bill Hill here. Is it a spam or is it, what, what is it? Anyway. I'll tell you one thing. Everybody should get a flip top. Don't do these other phones. Don't mess with them, right? Throw your phones away and get a flip top. No. <laughs> I, could, I could say something else, but I'm, not, I'm, 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 leave that, I'm gonna leave it alone, all right? But anyway, Satan will come in and he'll use these phones to try to distract us, right? How many, I'm serious, how, I'm, I know it's okay, but how many of you will be at a, a stoplight and the green light shows and the person is looking at this? Or they're going down like this, they're looking down. And I thought, what are they looking at? These phones. And then they're, wait a minute, it's a green light. Oh, well, I'm gonna honk. They can't even hear it. They're just so busy doing this. It's distracting. Anyway, enough of that. How many of you have a flip top? Oh, I'm so proud of you, so proud. <laughs> wow, I'm not the only one. All right, good. All right, moving, moving on. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10, 4. The weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. We, do we demolish arguments and every pretense that sets itself up against the knowledge of God? And this is very important. Uh, I don't even know if it's underlined in your notes. Is it? We take captive every thought. You and I take captive every single thought and make it what? Obedient to Christ. Whatever those thoughts are. And if they're not good thoughts, rebuke them in Jesus' name immediately. And get rid of them. Instantaneously. Don't entertain it. Why? Because Satan wants to get into your brain. That's why the helmet, I'm repeating it and I don't care. That's why the helmet of salvation is so valuable to each and every one of us today. Protect your mind. Protect your mind. And I thought, we have divine power through the person of the Holy Spirit in our life. You and I, we have divine power in the person of the Holy Spirit living in us. And we have the power to take every thought captive. Think about that and make it obedient to Jesus Christ. Isn't that great? I mean, you and I have that kind of power and I thought, whoa. And uh, again, Romans 12, one tells us how we can do this. Therefore, I urge you brothers and sisters in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Verse 2, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Don't conform to it. Don't be conforming to the patterns of this world. It's too weird. This weird... This, Oh, man, do not conform any longer to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will for each one of our lives. But it's up to you and I to take every thought captive, make it obedient to Christ. And I don't know about you, but I mean, I, I deal with this every single day. I'll be sitting in my lazy boy and some stupid thought will come in my mind from 50 years ago. I can remember 50 years ago. 
That's a miracle within itself. But I got to take some of these thoughts captive. And I thought, why in the world am I thinking about when I was seven years old? I'm serious. Because all that is gone. And I think about our past. You don't have a past. I have a past. I did a few things that I would call sins. Not many, two or three. But I still had to be forgiven, right? Amen. I don't want to have them continuously coming up again and again and again. It's in the past. It's gone. Amen. So what I need to do, take every thought, what, captive and make it obedient to Christ. Amen. Are you with me? That's why we have that helmet of salvation. And number one, transformed means a change of substance, of character, and conduct. A radical change when there's a transformation that takes place. It's of substance, character, and conduct. And A, this is to me extremely important. In fact, I, even in my own notes, I have point A. You see that? I have it circled and I have a star beside it. Even in my own notes. The change of substance simply means things you change by what? Choice. The things that you change by choice. I choose to do this. I choose not to do this. It's that simple. But life is filled with choices. And if we want to do the right thing, we want to make sure that we do the right thing. We want to think the right thing. And life is filled with choices, right? I mean, I don't care what you eat, drink, wear, whatever. I mean, I actually got up this morning and I thought, what am I going to wear to church? I think I'll go in black today. Black shirt. Does anybody care? No. No. But I see a lot of you wearing black today. I mean, I'm not right, Greg. We came in, we were matching shirts as we were coming in. Uh, but it's all a choice. All a choice. So the key to a renewed mind is this. Uh, it comes from the inside then goes out. And you and I, we have the power to work with our conduct and our character and our lifestyle. It's up to you and I how we want to do that. And I'll tell you again, we have it all by the power of the Holy Spirit living in each one of us right this very moment. It's God's power working in and out and through you and I. So every morning, be sure you put the helmet of salvation on. Protect your mind. But don't leave your house. In fact, even if you don't leave your house, you still have to walk around your house. You still have to go to the kitchen. You go to the bathroom. You do this. You do that. I want the helmet of salvation on at all times. And the most comfortable lazy boy, Satan will still try to attack our minds. Right? So we have to have that helmet of salvation on 24-7 all the time. Now, Roman numeral number two. This is a great one, too. The sword of the Spirit. God's living word, God's living word, the sword of the spirit. Um, I thought about this in uh, just uh, just for just a half of a second here. Uh, just take a moment and have your hands in your own lap, but just look at your hands for a second. And imagine me, I'm a multi, multi, multi billionaire. Look at your hands, and each one of you, I'm going to come up and down the aisle, and I'm going to pour diamonds into your hands. I mean diamonds. And you're looking at, whoa, wow, diamonds. And I'll add a ruby, because I was born in July. <laughs> Nobody even knows what I'm talking about. You got those diamonds, right? I think about how precious and how wealthy you and I are. How rich you and I are. We got these diamonds. Well, the word of God is like precious jewels to bless us, to protect us, enrich us. And it's this limitless blessing of God in the word of God. Precious diamonds. When you open your Bible, you are a multi-billionaire. Why? Because the promises of God are written for you. Amen. The 
promises of God are written for you. And God will speak clearly to you because he does what? He wants to bless you and he'll bless you through his word. It's very powerful. So I look at John chapter 17 and verse 17. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. So number one, the word of God is our source of truth. Plain and simple. If I want the truth about God, I read the word. Truth about man, truth about life, death, victory, power, overcoming, Satan, damnation, hell, eternity. You name it, it's in the word of God. I don't care what it is. It's so filled with wealth. And I'll tell you something, you can read that word and sometimes it will just illuminate in your very spirit. You open it up and you read it and you go, wow, wow. I'm going to apply that to my life today. In fact, all week. That's so important to me as I read it. Luke eleven twenty eight. 28. He replied, blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. God will speak to you and he'll tell you what to do and not to do. And then he says, it's up to you to choose. Again, what? Choose. It's up to you. Choose right or wrong. Good or bad. It's up to you. Life is filled with choices. That's why I want the helmet of salvation on. I want to make right choices in my life. I mean, I've only got, what, maybe 20, 30 more years to go. Or maybe even longer than that. Who knows, right? But along the journey of life, I want to make right choices each and every day. So... We have that. And again, uh, Luke eleven twenty eight. Blessed are he, and I'm going to repeat it again. I know I read it. Blessed rather are those who hear the word of God and obey it. So number two, the word of God is our source of happiness and blessing. The word of God is our source of happiness and blessing. So we got to remember that. So when I read it, boy, I'm going to be blessed today. It's going to fill me with the joy of the Lord, which is my strength, Nehemiah 8, 10. Boy, that's super duper, isn't it? Just quote Nehemiah 8.10 to yourself. The joy of the Lord is my strength right now, right this very moment. What? God says it. It's in his word. Believe it. Act on it. 1 Peter 2.2, like newborn babes crave pure milk so that by it you may grow up in your salvation. So number three, the word of God is our food for growth. The Word of God is our food for growth, and there's no sugar in it. It's, it's sugar-free, all right? But the Word of God is like uh, filled with protein, carbohydrates, vitamins, nutrients, and no sugar. Okay, one gram. That's it. All right. Psalms 119, 105, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So number four, the Word of God is our source of guidance. The Word of God will guide and direct and lead you if you read it. It will do that in your life. To lead a successful and overcoming life. So it's very important. It will guide you and direct you. And I like to think of myself and I think of you uh, as living successful lives. And as I think of this church, I think of a group of overcomers, just a big group of overcomers, not being overcome, but you overcome the enemy all the time through the word of God. Romans 5, uh, pardon me, Romans 15, 4. For everything that was written in the past was written to teach us so that through endurance and in the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope, hope. So number five. The Word of God is our source of hope and comfort. Hope and comfort. We have a future and we have a hope, according to Jeremiah. He gives us a future and a hope. We always have the positive, not the negative, to work with. And so, it's our hope and our comfort. 2 Timothy 3.16 All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and here's something important. Training in righteousness. Training you and I to live a righteous, godly life by simply doing what it says to do. It's never too hard, never complicated. 
Pretty simple. All we have to do is do it. So number six, the word of God is for our protection. It protects us, watches over us, blesses us. So we can live again, a successful, overcoming, blessed, blessed life. Amen. Yes. Hebrews 4.12. For the word of God is living and active. The word of God is living and active. The word of God is what? Living Amen. and what? Amen. Active. Amen. I said it three times. Amen. I'm not old. I remember what I'm doing. It was intentional. All right. Sharper than any double edged sword. It penetrates even the dividing of soul, spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of what? The heart. That's powerful stuff. So number seven, the word of God is what? Powerful. The word of God is powerful. It's so powerful that it can take you and I from darkness into light. From sin and death into righteousness and holiness and eternal life. Changes despair into hope just by reading the word. And I think uh, I think about this failure into success. Because a lot of times people feel like failures when they're not. But the Word of God can do this from childness to maturity, and that's a big deal too. So the Word of God is very, very, very powerful. And what's the things we need to do? You have to read it, right? As we read it, we hear it like you're hearing it today. And then what's the most important thing? Do it. Do it. You know, you can read it. it doesn't do you any good unless you actually apply it to your life. You've got to apply the word of God to your life. You heard how many scriptures did we read today? Yeah, 250 scriptures. You can hear them. You say, boy, that sounds really great. Doesn't do you any good unless you do what? Do it. Apply it to your life. You hear it, you learn it, you live it. And so that's vitally important. In 2 Timothy 2.15, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved a workman who does not need to be ashamed and who correctly handles the word of God. Isn't that powerful? So um, what do you need to do today? Put your helmet on. Take that sword of the spirit with you everywhere you go. That's power. That's power. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the spiritual armor that you've given us. We thank you for this time together. We thank you for our time of worship and praise. We're grateful again, Father, for the cross of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who makes all this possible for each one of us. It's by the cross, by his blood shed for each one of us, taking us from darkness into light, from damnation to eternal life. So, Father, thank you so much for all your blessing. And I ask your blessing again continuously on us. In Jesus' name, amen.